sounds like a bad math problem. You know, the wordy ones you puzzled over in junior high and incessantly asked your teacher when you would ever use this in real life? A client of yours owns a 197-unit building in an up-and-coming Chicago neighborhood. The building is at 68% occupancy. All of the units must be rehab, and four on each floor must be handicap accessible. Because the seniors are residents, your client wants them to stay in the building and move most of the residents only once. Use the diagram provided and complete a plan that satisfies the criteria given. I'm Jessica Friesen, and this is the second episode of Chicago Rehab Network's Talking to Walls Project. And that word problem is similar to the situation Heartland Alliance, its construction crew, and the tenants of Hollywood House have been working through. This installment of Talking to Walls tells the story of how 197 units of affordable housing for seniors were preserved and rehabbed. We'll do this by hearing from some of the people who helped to make it happen. Aaron Potter, Talking to Walls co-producer, reports. The Hollywood House property is located right off Lakeshore Drive, on the border of Chicago's Edgewater and Uptown neighborhoods. In 2006, the City of Chicago developed a plan for affordable housing for seniors. In this plan, they identified community areas that had the greatest disparity between the units of housing available and the households in need. The Edgewater neighborhood had the sixth greatest disparity ranking for the income level that the Hollywood House primarily serves individuals at 30 to 60 percent of the area median income. When I spoke with residents, they talked about a lack of other affordable housing options in the area, specifically citing the closure of two CHA buildings just up the road. The property is currently owned by Heartland Alliance, a community development corporation, but was previously owned by another not-for-profit, the Hellenic Foundation. The Hellenic Foundation approached Heartland Alliance when they realized that they did not have the capacity to move the project forward, given the type of investment needed. Andy Gear, executive director of Heartland Housing, spoke with us about the shared desires of the two organizations to keep the building affordable and accommodate the current residents. An important aspect when we started to talk to the Hellenic Foundation was the existing residents as a result of us taking over uh, rehabbing and financing the, the rehab that we would agree to try to not uh, displace anybody. We had met with every resident in the building. We sort of reviewed what their financial situation was and then we also discussed with them their options around relocating and we could potentially move them off-site for a period of time where they'd be temporarily housed somewhere else and they to a T, most all the residents wanted to stay in the building during the rehab. They, they didn't want to leave because it is their home. Um, but there will be always challenges about trying to rehab a building with residents in place. The renovations to Hollywood House are a mod rehab. Aside from the new surface touches like cabinets, fixtures, and appliances, they would also be updating the electrical work as well as the heating and cooling system. A sprinkler fire safety system is being added and some of the units have been modified to be ADA accessible. I visited Zach Stanley of Madison Construction on-site at Hollywood House to talk with him about the rehab. While I waited in the lobby, men in hard hats politely maneuvered large wheelbarrows and heavy armloads of materials around an older woman pushing a walker. Mr. Gear seems to have been right about there being challenges. On a tour of the building, Mr. Stanley related to me one of the problems that his team ran into when they began installing the new heating system. It seems that whoever originally laid the electrical wiring for the building did so in a way that completely surprised Madison Construction's best guesses. We knew that there was going to be something in the floor. We made all the educated guessing that we could ahead of time to say, okay, well, we know we're going to need holes here. That's the electrical closet. How do we think they ran the conduit? And then we proceeded. The way they ran the conduit, it was so off the charts, unorthodox, that we hit it. So when we started pouring holes, all of a sudden we were knocking out power. And I had my plumber call me and say, hey, I'm in unit 215 and it just got dark. Uh, it, was, it was a big problem. If nobody was living here, a lot of the issues that we had would have been moot points because we have to keep a lot of the backbone in place while we're renovating. We have to keep the old heating system running until we're done. Susan Smith on the 11th floor needs to have cooling 
today, otherwise she'd be melting. While in the building, I met a tenant in the elevator whom I had heard of before visiting. Mr. Chris, I had been told, was the best dressed man in the neighborhood, which is how I immediately recognized him. A spry gentleman of 98 years, as I had also been told, he was decked out in white slacks topped with a cherry red blazer over a fantastically sequined black and red sweater, completed by a derby hat and a wide smile. A man filled with stories, he told me about the restaurants he used to own, about dating Mae West, and about how all of Chicago is his. I came back to Hollywood House again to meet with him and talk about the work happening in his home. He had a new outfit, but the same upbeat spirit. I love the location, the people live in, and these people, they give us everything they have to give us. And now we have a special owner here, the Heartlands. Well, it looks like it would be things would be much better. And that's why I'm staying here. This is my home. I love it. The neighborhood is good. I think I'm the king of the neighborhood. I'm Mr. Hartland out here. Not everybody may be as enthusiastic as I am. This is a construction site, and a lot of folks have trouble getting around. You know, we're all seniors, and there are always problems when you rehab a building. Uh, I'm, I might not be the one to talk to. I like this building too much. <laughs> Up on the 10th floor, I got to take in fantastic views of Lake Michigan out any one of the 13 windows in Jean Horcher's yet-to-be-renovated apartment. It was a tidy space with books lining the shelves and spread on the table, a few dishes in the sink. Quite good, Mr. Horcher noted earnestly, given that he's been a bachelor for 20 years. As an active member of the Jane Addams Senior Caucus, he works mostly on health care issues, but when the question of his home remaining affordable came up, he got involved. Jane Adams worked with Andy Gear and Heartland Alliance to secure TIF financing for the property and arrange tenant meetings throughout the planning and construction stages. Jane Adams Senior Caucus works in the area of uh, affordable housing for seniors, so we are uh, interested in developing more affordable housing and preserving uh, affordable housing for seniors. We believe there's not enough of it. Um, we believe, too, uh, sometimes places aren't responsive. Uh, here at Hollywood House, we've had good good relationship with Andy Gear and the staff. Uh, we don't always agree, but, uh, but they always listen, and they always react. You know, they listen to what we have to say and take action on it, so that's always good. So with a good coalition base and open communication, that math problem turns out to be not as complicated as it originally seemed. All of the people I spoke with explained that it will be a give and take process. Residents will be condensed onto certain floors while rehab work will take place on others. Once a floor is completed, residents will be moved back and work will begin on the newly empty floor. When the entire process is complete, the Edgewater community will have preserved 197 units of affordable senior housing in a neighborhood that needs it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Talking to Walls, a project of the Chicago Rehab Network. Special thanks to Andy Gear for talking with us about his work at Heartland Alliance, Zach Stanley of Madison Construction for showing us around, Gene Horcher of Jane Addams Senior Caucus for welcoming us into his home, and Mr. Chris for taking time out of his schedule to meet with us twice. Music featured in this production was sourced from archive.org. The first track was A Thousand Pinwheels by Twombly Spiders, and the second was 1848 by Tiny Creatures. Jessica Friesen and Aaron Potter contributed with assistance and feedback from other CRN staff. To learn more about this episode or about the important work of Chicago Area Community Development Corporations, please visit us on our website at www.chicagorehab.org.